We got power to our switch. Let's see if it'll run. <laughs> that's fast. Yeah, that's lightning fast. Dang it. been RVing and thought to yourself, man, I really don't want to go outside, pull these stupid levers just so that I can dump my black and gray tanks. Are you tired of doing this motion or this motion? We're crawling all the way underneath your RV just to do this motion. 90% of the controls in this particular RV, I can control straight from my phone which is unbelievable. And that is the way that the RV world is really going. It's being more and more automated, which is so convenient for you as the user. But there's still one spot that is just lacking in technology, and that is dumping your black and gray tanks until today. The only problem is what we're doing today is not going on my trailer. It is going on my friend James's trailer. But it's still gonna be a good task, and we're gonna figure out how to do it. Here's the part, here is the gate. Here's the motor and the gate will slide back into this box. When it's open, closes back up. What is cool about it is that it does have manual overrides. So if for some reason you do not have power to your unit, but you've got to drain some tanks, you can override it manually. One of the things they do recommend though, and they have this kind of notification everywhere is that it does need to sit on the pipe upright to 10 o'clock or to two o'clock is the only angles it can be. Luckily, we have enough room for this to sit vertically in its box. This is the back of James's rig, and this is the valve we're gonna replace. This is a main valve gate. So this is the official black tank. This is the official gray tank. Because his black tank doesn't, oh, doesn't fill up very fast, but the gray tank does, but he doesn't wanna keep it open, he is going to replace this main valve with that automatic valve. So that way he can open the gray tanks at any time from inside the vehicle. Now, that option is available for that black tank as well, but we're gonna work our way up to that guy. So this is the one we're gonna go for first, and I think it should be a simple install. There are two key points here that we've gotta think about. One is where we're gonna put the switch in the rig so that it's accessible, and two, how we are gonna get power to this unit. It needs 15 amps to run, so we've gotta be able to run power back to the breaker box. We're technically in the master bedroom. These are the dresser drawers, and here is the actual junction box or breaker box for the unit. So you can tell a lot of wiring goes on underneath here. James is gonna feed and follow this single black wire right there and put it out to us underneath the back of the RV. Got a trusty dusty radio, and now we can actually communicate with one another. This wire right here was what we were looking at from up above. We're gonna try and feed it through there and back all the way into this box right here. We'll probably have to drill a hole up high. We gotta pull the wire first. Yeah, I got you. Here we go, Red Rider. Think I might have to use my fish tape. What if you uh, pull the black wire back just a little bit, tape it to it, and then pull, I'll pull the black wire forward, you know what I mean? So pull your slack back, keep going, keep going. You can pull it back a few inches and then we'll use that black tape, black wire as your fish tape. Yep, keep going, a little more, a little more, a little more, that's good. Now tape it there. Could I mention that uh, anything in an RV is tight quarters, no matter what? Tape together at the bottom, now we'll feed them in unison. Okay, you ready? Yep, I'll start pushing. Okay. Oh, baby, that's tight. No. Stop, stop, stop. Hold on, let me, I'm going to tape it some more. Just a second. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, pull. It is tight. Okay. Got it. Okay, I'm taping. Okay, I'm ready to pull the white wire. You can pull that black wire back up if you need to pull some slack out of it. Okay. Are you ready for the white? Yep.
Okay, I better stop right there. Okay, we've been able to run our power, which is 16.2, all the way in and over to where the valve is gonna connect and open up. So the actual valve itself is behind and inside this box. This is inside that circuit breaker. Now this wire that we do have is not just standard wire. It is actually marine grade wire, which I do recommend because this is gonna be very exposed to the elements down here. And we are gonna actually wrap, once we get all of the control wires, they're gonna be wrapped in this same kind of little sheath. Okay, so in a DC system, black is always negative. Red is positive. And we're kicking these up to DC because it's a DC motor on the unit. Well, it's DC power, so it's 12 volt. So yeah, it would be a DC motor. 12 volt, still 15 amps. We're gonna use 10. Get the tug test. Oh, Son of a... that connection failed the tug test. So we gotta get another one. That's what you do the tug test. Definitely a must in every RV kit is a small electrical connections. I don't know how many times I've had to use this or how many of these I've burned through because you have little wires that go bad or little connections that have gotta be redone. So always carry one of these with you. Crimp it. Perfect. I feel good. That's okay. great. Now we'll strip a little bit of black. And this will just attach to the bus bar, the grounding bus bar in the back. There's not really a positive and a new or a neutral it's a negative and a positive yeah just the ground hmm. fuse will go right above this clear one that's the one we're going to i think it's number 15. okay but we don't have the fuse in so there won't be any power on the wire okay we'll hook the positive this is a spade connector that's good wow and then it has a bus bar just like a yeah, just like in your house No, power is not shut off. This is all live, but luckily there's no power running through that particular fuse that we're working with right now. We've got our wire ran, we've got power to it. Now we're actually just gonna do a preliminary test, getting it stripped, crimped, and connected to the physical motor itself. One, so we can test to make sure this motor is good before we tear all of that apart. And two, they say to check for polarity in the electrical, which that's what that green little light is gonna be for. And according to the layout they give you, your black is your positive and your green is your negative. So we just have to switch that around. Our red is our positive from our box and our black is our negative. Okay, so we have the uh, negative wire connected, which is black in this case, and the positive connected. We have our fuse in and when we connect the wire, this will tell us if our polarity, meaning the positive and negative, are actually hooked up correctly. Bingo, bingo. It comes with two switches. One is for inside the unit and one is for out here. So that either place you can actually run the system. It does say that there is no pressure switches in this valve. So do not put your fingers in the way of it while testing it because they don't guarantee it won't cut them off. So we got power to our switch. Let's see if it'll run. <laughs> that's fast. Yeah, that's light. This is the exterior switch because these lights are super bright and they said people are notorious for complaining when they put them inside by accident because it keeps you up at night. Yeah, that would. That thing's super bright. Look at that bad boy. I like that it tells you red when it's open, green when it's closed. That's, I mean, that's nice. Yowza. Now we are not sponsored by this brand at all, but we're just showing it. But a feature that is nice is everything is physical disconnects. So. You can actually do all your wiring, get it buttoned up nice and tight out of the way, and then you can connect your motor 
right back to where it's gonna sit. Here's the stumbling block we're working on right now, and it's really not difficult, but we're working off of the instructions. They say to not put these gaskets into the motor like so, even though that is where they are going to go. It says you put this ringlet on this pipe first. And it's very clear about that and says that's very important, but we don't see a way to actually fit this because to put it on those pieces, you lose your width and they end up here in the long run, but it clearly said not to do that. So we actually called, which is nice. They have a you know, phone number you can call for service and they are getting back to us. Now we're at the position where we can start undoing all of the bolts. I do recommend that you make sure all of your valves are closed or your tanks are completely empty or you are in for a wild ride. Ooh. Smell it. I wonder if we should, it's probably because it's coming from this. Oh, do you know what? That's probably right. You got your cap? I do. Let's open that up. Let's crack that guy. We're going to cap off the black tank hose so Stinky, that we're not getting slinky. all that gas coming out. Oh, that was bad. Instantly. There's two gaskets we gotta pull off those, right? Yep. So those are the whole yeah, gaskets. That's why they sit like that. So they sit on those flanges. Yeah. Okay, so it will work. I think we should be all right. Per their instructions, you need to lubricate the entire gate. And they say that there's enough to do it twice. So if you've used more than half of it on the entire gate, you've used too much. So I think I'm gonna try and get a quarter of it. Kind of spread out on there. Good. So I'd try that much. Okay, flip it over. And I'm assuming the reason you lubricate the entire gate is because the entire gate goes through the gaskets when it opens and closes. They stay on there pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, I think. Yeah, okay, they're fitting in good. Yeah, baby. Feels good. Yeah, that's real good. Okay. Now we'll get their four bolts. Tighten it up to 10 pounds of torque and we're in business. Here we go. Get some muscle behind it. Basically, once it's tight, one turn is 10 pounds. Once it's finger tight. leak test pull a little bit of gray water just shower or sink water make sure that there's no leak and then we'll close it up okay. oh baby and if we were gonna get any leaks it would be leaking right around this valve here they emphasized really strong to not go past 10 pounds of torque on it they said you can go to 15 if you are seeing leaks if you go to 15 foot-pounds of torque and you're still seeing leaks, they said to contact them because something's not correct. He's gonna hook up the fuse. We have our valve in place and the remote is actually over here for right now. And we just wanna see if we can turn it on and off. RV tip, use these clear plastic unions because that way you can determine what your tanks look like, how clean they're actually getting. Green light. Okay, let it rip. I'm a... You ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
<laughs> That's pretty sweet. That's so freaking cool. <laughs> I could do that all day. Looks like we are functioning now. The last task is to be actually put this switch where you want their final destination to be. One will be outside next to all the valves that we've been working on and the other one will be inside the unit. So we just have to run that wire as well. That is predetermined wire, it comes with it. Um, so hopefully you've got enough length for whatever you want the wire to go, but they give you plenty to work with. We're gonna Lexail this guy so it sits in there and seals in tight because these clips that it has are made for a thicker material so it rattles around a little bit. So once you just solidify it in there, it's not coming out. Along with power, we have to get a switch up there so we're gonna fish one more fish tape up to pull that switch wire through. Okay, I'm gonna start pushing this up. I think there's like a small hole right there. I think there's like a small hole right there because it's like, like hitting this wall. It does go right through the, where the white wire is. Maybe got it. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna pull really slow and gentle to start with. I'll go ahead and pull out all the slack and I'll tell you when to slow down. I just pulled it off. Okay, ready when you are. I'll tell you when to slow down. Okay, here we go, you're in. It's going real slow, keep going. Keep going. Okay, you ready for me to kind of pull? Yeah, hold on one second. It's like... Okay, yeah, give it just a nice little slow tuck. Hold on. Keep going. And pour, big buddy. I think I can see you up in there. Oh my heck. <laughs> Jeez. I was about ready to come on. Feels good. We got the green light. But we do have the green light, all right. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Now you can just be in the shower, reach out, push it. If you're wondering what the purpose of this switch is, it is for when your black or gray tank is overflowing or you've got it topped off and you don't want to leave the cabin, you simply push the button. And voila, your gray tank or black tank is empty. Now your gray tank or black tank can be completely emptied with just the touch of a button. You guys, I will leave in the description down below a link for the gate itself and for these clear plastic black tank connectors. They are a lifesaver. If you guys like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you later.